Welcome to the Weekly Beat. It is Thursday, February 22nd. Uh, boy, do we have a lot to get to today. Just a ton. Uh, before we get into that, of course, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, at the Weekly Beat VR, at Spencer Hunt individually. At Musa Matthew individually. Yeah, of course. Uh, all of our shows are on YouTube as well. Yeah. Um, so you have an opportunity to catch us in whatever way you'd like. Um, but before we waste any more time, let's get right to it. Uh, last week, the show was very heavily about LSU baseball. You know, we previewed uh, the Notre Dame series. You predicted a sweep. Not exactly how it went, but that's what we're here to talk about right now. Yeah. Man, LSU athletics just in general are like in fuego right now. Not really always in a good way, but they are just hot at the moment. Uh, baseball to start with? Yeah. If, if you would have told me, that LSU was going to go out there and at least take two or three from Notre Dame, I'd have been like, yeah, you know, you're, you're probably right. Sweep would have been great. Right. I mean, we, we talked about that anyway, last week. If you would have told me LSU baseball is going to go out there and they're going to lose two games out of three, I would have said, okay, well, you know, that was always a possibility and it must have been the pitching must have been pretty suspect. The bullpen had struggles and whatnot. If you would have told me that this LSU baseball team was going to go out there and get outplayed and outmanned for three games and have to come back and win by the skin of their teeth and lose two out of three, I would have never, ever believed you. And especially that it would have been the starting pitching. That would have been so atrocious. It was not what we expected. Not at all. Which is not necessarily a bad thing. Though. Okay, so it's interesting because we talked last week about what the biggest question marks for this team were. Right. And we decided mostly pitching. Okay, of course. You know, the starting rotation is three different guys than we had last season. Mm -hmm. You know, there was bound to be some growing pains there. And we see them early on. Um, I will tell you, nobody pitched more than four and a third this yep. weekend, and that was Caleb Gilbert on Friday night. Yep. Uh, Zach Hess less than memorable in his opening start on Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I, mean, I, I remember it pretty oh, well. I, oh, I know. But, uh... I, I know. Um, you know, outside of the bullpen, who over the weekend, for the most part, was really pretty solid. Yeah. You know, Sunday wasn't Sunday cold. was the outlier. Uh, well, Nick Bush, uh, mostly. Uh, that was um, not ideal for him. And we'll get but. there. But let's talk about that starting rotation, who combined gives up 16 earned runs yeah. in three games. Eight, uh, 18 total, or was it 17 total runs? It was, it was 18 total. 16 18 earned. total, 16 earned. Okay, yeah. that's what I'm But, um... Yeah, you know, I mean, you said growing pains. Um, look, I, yeah, there were going to be some, but that was just not – those guys are better than that, and I would expect them to perform better this weekend. Uh, that was probably the worst possible thing that could happen to that cast because now everybody is off of it. They're just like, screw it, put him back in the bullpen. I'm done with it. I don't want to see it. Here's my thing with that, though. He walked six batters. He could not buy a strike. If he comes out of the bullpen and does that, he's still not going to be good. It doesn't matter that he was starting. If he comes out of the bullpen and pitches like that, it's not successful. Gilbert found the zone too much. And when I say that, I mean well, you his, hit. his pitches were in the zone, but they were too in the zone. He right. wasn't hitting his spots. He was falling behind and having to lay the ball across the plate, and they weren't missing it. Todd Peterson, you know, started out great. Three scoreless innings. Um and then what was LSU's problem the entire weekend, free passes, reared its ugly head, especially on Sunday. For Peterson, he goes walk, walk, three run homer. And I don't think I'm more happy to see anybody leave besides Gilgenbach for Notre Dame with his three home runs this weekend, past weekend. Um, but the bullpen, aside from Sunday, like I said, that was the outlier, was very good. And they were very good last night. Well, we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll but, get to that. But, I mean, Friday, between Beck and Bain, the combination of the two, no earned run runs, nine mm -hmm. strikeouts, only one walk on 95 pitches between the two of them. That is more than quality. Mm -hmm. That is that is ultimately, you know, obviously you have the grand slam from Jordan, then you have the Josh Smith through run homer. You know, that is what elevated LSU to win. But without that bullpen performance, they don't even have a chance in that Friday night game. They don't. Uh, Saturday, we had three guys from the bullpen who pitched six and two-third innings, and they only gave up two earned runs, six strikeouts, only one walk between the three of them. So, again, mm -hmm. that game was really eight innings, and then the third the third inning, which LSU gave up seven runs while Zach Kess was still there. So, yeah, and they left him in too long. 
But I mean, it's the early season. I mean, you're right. I mean, I I completely agree. But the bullpen, for the most part, kept LSU at least within shouting distance for the rest of Saturday. Sunday, a little bit different. Um, Sunday, we see five different guys out of the bullpen. They give up eight earned runs, um, 94 pitches between the five of them, Mm -hmm. uh, but not the consistency that was shown on Friday and Saturday. No, and a lot of that is because of the walks. They walked with the Pitching staff as a whole, Sunday, walked 12 guys. 12 of the 16 they walked uh, over the whole weekend. I think it was 12 that they walked on Sunday. Oh, actually, I have a box score. Hold on, I can look. Uh, they walked a lot. They did not walk 12. They walked six, seven, eight. They walked eight of them. They walked half the batters yeah. on that day. Because uh, in the starters walked six. They walked 10 over the course of the um weekend and then they walked as uh, a staff eight on Sunday and I mean that 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 hurt you know all 11 runs were armed on Sunday that's not right ideal but so so we lose two out of three to Notre Dame the second two were not really close no, um and the sky was falling and the sky was falling right so so my question is how much do you take away from this weekend how much you know starting one and two is it a big deal like do you feel like you know, I've seen, and this is how LSU fans are typically. You know, it's instantly, you know, doomsday. It's Scott's fault, right? So, yeah. so how do you feel? Well, it's so it wasn't fun to sit out there and watch, but it's not. No, it doesn't. The last LSU team to start one and two, incidentally, they lost to Texas. By the way, who comes in this weekend anyway? The '99, that team went on to make a super regional. They got eliminated in Tuscaloosa, but they made a super regional. This team can do the same thing. It's different circumstances, I understand, but in the grand scheme of things, this doesn't – it's much like a midweek game, honestly. Okay. Well, nobody, nobody, when they're sitting in the room to decide the team, nobody's going to be like, Ellis, you can't make it. Man, you know, they went 18 and eighteen and 12 in conference play this year, but they lost that opening series in Notre Dame. They got to stay home. Nobody's going to say that. That's not going to work. So what they need to do is flush it. I'm glad it happened in the first weekend, actually. Because now you know what you are, and you have the rest of these weeks to correct it. You have three more weeks to rec- correct it before you get into SEC play, which is what really matters. So it, it sucked to see, but they needed that. I know you were not, you know, you constantly say that midweek games don't matter, but do we learn something out of last night against you? You learn that your bullpen is going to be pretty good, I think. I, I really think that. I'm liking what I see. You got to realize the bullpen pitched. Literally all 27 outs last night. Cam Sanders right. did not record an out. He did not record an out. He didn't record an out. They pitched all 27 outs, and they gave up three runs. And two of them? Two earned runs. Two were earned. Eight, eight strikeouts, only two walks, 129 pitches between the seven of them right. that that were out there, which, you know, weekday games are always kind of a combined effort on the mound. Yeah. Um, it was disappointing to, to have Sanders – not do what we expected because we we expect him to be someone that is not only a solid weekday starter but a potential you know into that weekend rotation so his first start this season not strong but that could be set up all four of the lsu starting pitchers but what what mainly you're asking what you know so aside from the bullpen what else i took away right, is want? this team can't hit the ball yeah they can't hit the ball mm-hmm. they didn't hit the ball well they i mean they didn't do anything well on the weekend. They right. just they just didn't. They didn't field well. They definitely didn't pitch well. They didn't really hit well. They hit 217 as a team and well below the Mendoza line with runners of scoring position. And right. they relied way too much on the home run. Um, not so much last night. They scored 14 runs on 12 hits. Didn't yeah. have a home run. I know it's you know. I know. But it's still, you're seeing that this team, they can't hit the ball. And they were without Zach Watson and Josh Smith. Well, who they'll be without for a while. Right, and that's something that's very important. Josh Smith out for four to six weeks um, with a, a stress reaction, which it's better to be safe than sorry keeping him out for these, this first month or so of the season because if that injury gets worse, that could be a stress fracture, and then we won't see yeah. him again. Right. So, you know, we have Hal Hughes, who is going to replace him. He, he was two for four last night with a couple RBIs, mm-hmm. a very good start as a replacement for mm-hmm. Josh Smith. Um, Watson missed last night. Doesn't look like it's going to be serious. He should still play against Texas. Um, just a, a little tweak of the oblique muscle. Um, but he started this weekend only 3 for 12. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Cabrera, who was much heralded, went 0-3 and two hits last night. Yeah. He uh, 
Nick Webb started out great. First two first two plate appearances got a hit, seeing on a double, went cold for the rest of the weekend. He got on base a few times last night too. So and another good positive is the pitchers who were injured, AJ Lavis and Nick Stores are ahead of schedule. Lavis actually could pitch this weekend, Maneri said. Good. We could That's see good. him pitch, and when Stores comes back, he's probably gonna get a shot at being a starter. Oh, which I could agree. be next week. He could end up back next week. They're ahead of schedule, which is good. They're both throwing with no pain. Stores was throwing on flat ground earlier this week. But they're both So the pain. the Notre Dame weekend didn't go as planned. Okay. UNO gives us a little bit of a bounce back feel, a little momentum heading into Texas this weekend, who wins their series against ULL, who mm-hmm. is not a weak opponent by any stretch of the imagination. No. Boy, they're off to a tough start, too, though. Yeah, they are. They, they got beat by Southeastern last night. Texas, 3-1 uh, and one so far mm-hmm. on the season. Uh, they win against Lamar this in their midweek game. Um, but they're starting pitching very, very good. Always. I mean, always. This is what Texas does. They pitch. They don't, they're not ever going to hit the ball with great authority. They're hitting 236 as a team on the year so far. But they pitch both their first two starters both have an ERA at zero. Yeah, and their combined, third guy right, only gave up one earned run, one point eight. They're going to pitch. That's what they do. Uh, and Nolan Kingham, who's their Friday night guy, he went eight innings with not. A, I mean, he eight shutout innings, mm-hmm. only three hits, ten strikeouts, and one walk. That's it. He started very strong, and he is going to be a a man to deal with this Friday night for be. the for the Tigers. Um. Uh, you know, it's it, this is not going to be. This was never going to be an easy weekend for LSU. Now it's really not going to be an easy weekend. They have to kind of keep it within reason and not play tight. They this is not this again. This isn't a must win. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing. No one's going to look back at it and be like, well, they lost to Texas. We can't. You know, they finished second in the West, but they lost to Texas. We got to keep. No, it's not, not going to happen. But it is so. another chance to work out the. Tweet, the it is. Know, the, the, the things that are that are not working. And Oof. against – let me ask you this. A lot of opponents, a lot of teams start just kind of like in football. They start with weaker cupcake-type teams. Notre Dame and Texas are not weak opponents. Mm-hmm. Are you okay as an LSU fan with a, with a heavier, like stronger non-conference game? Absolutely. Some people aren't. So I, I love I just, it. I, yes, absolutely. I think, I think you learn more about you your do. team doing this absolutely. than facing – Lamar, you know, like them facing, uh, a, you know. And you got South Buck Alabama, Cat, South Alabama coming in in the midweek a few weeks. They're right. right. Southeastern hosts you next week. You got to go on the road there. It's probably they, they're going to be up playing out over their skis to play you. So I mean, it <laughs> absolutely this is is big. And I yeah, I hate the cupcakes. I mean, next weekend you got Sacred Heart and and I don't even remember the other two guys. I know we play Sacred Heart on Friday, I think, but. So let, me, so let me ask you this. Texas coming in this weekend. I want to know what your thoughts are. Um, I know you'll be there Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely, if you get a chance to make it out to the box, do it. Tigers need you. No, no place like it. If you haven't been, you're missing out. I don't really understand. That's a possibility. But if you need an extra incentive, Saturday, the first 1,000 fans in attendance will get free nachos. We've got the National Tortilla Chip Day. Why do we have that day? <laughs> if you needed any other Why reason to go Saturday, have that day? there's your reason. Okay. Free nachos. Yeah, there you go. Hey. Quality baseball, uh, free nachos. Yeah. Can't be. Uh, it'll be a good weekend. We'll, we'll see. I don't know. I, I I, mean, LSU certainly has the talent to take two out of three, but they could also lose two out of three again this weekend. So it's it's going to be tough. I, I, would, I would be mighty surprised if they dropped two series in a row. I would just be very, very surprised. I think they have a chip on their shoulder now. Yes, could be fighting with a vengeance yeah. come this weekend. Uh, but let's switch now quickly over to your doofus of the week. Mr. Oh, yeah. Musa. I almost forgot about that, actually. Uh, no, I can never forget. Already. Uh, okay. Well, you know, it was an interesting week in sports. There were plenty of people we could have picked for this. But um, we're going to go over to uh, Pyeongchang, South oh, Korea, for the, the Olympics. Olympics. Oh, yes, the, Olympics. the Winter Olympics. Uh, Love it. And everybody's favorite, the Russians. Excuse me, the Olympic athletes from Russia. Hey, do you know why they're having to be called that? Why is that? Well, they can't compete under the Russian flag. That's because there's that giant allegation of the state-sponsored doping for their athletes. Uh, and it caused them a lot of peril, and they can't compete under the Olympic athlete. They have to compete as the Olympic athletes from Russia. They're independent. They were hoping 
that a clean bill of health in the Winter Olympics could lift that yeah. ban, and they could in the summer Olympics they can compete again under the Russian flag. Okay. Uh, everybody was on board with this. Right, makes sense to me. Right. Yeah. You want to represent your country. It's part of the Olympics. Everybody That's was on the whole board. Point. Yeah. Everybody on board except for Alexander Krushelnitsky. Right. What was that? What I, was I, that think, last I think I'm saying that right. Uh, this man is a bronze medalist um, in curling. Won curling. It, won it with his wife. That's awesome. And then failed a drug test because he was doping in the Olympics that you're already in trouble for and you can't compete under your flag. What are you doing, Krushelnitsky? Let me ask you this question. I said he is a gold medal. No, not anymore. He has to get his medal back. Let hey. me ask you this question. What type of doping would he be taking? Like what type of, <laughs> what uh, type of violation okay, so would it he says have It's a, it's a ban, banned substance, melodonium. I don't know what that means. I don't know why you dope for curling. Does it? <laughs> Um, does it make you a faster sweeper? It, maybe it does. What are you doing? Uh, it gets better, though, actually. It's not no, a- it's not, because this guy is one of my favorites. i got to find his name there, because i got to shout him out here. Oh, Dmitry, not to shout out his last name, so I can't say it. What was that last name? He's the president of Russian, Russia's Curling Federation, and he says he really hopes and believes that taking the medal away is only temporary. Yeah, just like taking away Louisville's wins are going to be temporary. He's a doofus too. You think they're? I don't. Russia, you're stupid. You're all you. You're all dumb. What are you doing? A double you're, Russian doofus of the week. Just morons. What are Amazing. you thinking? You're, oh, you think they're not going to drug test you there when your country? You can't even compete for your country. You're independent, and you're still taking. What are you doing? Oh, people are stupid. And it, and it was a, a confirmed today that he did it. So, I mean, his excuse was great, too. He said uh, he took somebody else's something by mistake. It wasn't, well, yeah. I mean, that is, first of all, the oldest excuse in the book. That does not work. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. I, uh, he's a doofus, and his president of the Curling Foundation is also a doofus. And just, you know, Putin, he can be a doofus, too, I guess. <laughs> a man I rides horses shirtless. Like, you don't do that. It's, Entire country of Russia, doofuses. Oh, my gosh. Okay, well, um, LSU baseball, a struggling start. But let's talk about an LSU team that is looking for a strong finish, and that is the LSU basketball program. Uh, Two wins uh, back-to-back, one against Missouri, 64-63, and then they face Vanderbilt and win 88-78, leaving the Tigers 16-11 overall, 7-8 in the SEC. We've got some things to talk about with this Will Wade basketball player. I love Will Wade. Have I ever said that before? I don't think I've ever I, heard you say that. I love that man. I really do. He's great. Um, let's talk about it. Missouri, um, three starters and double digits for the Tigers, uh, mm-hmm. led by Waters with 28 points. Um, only 38.6% field goal. And the reason I bring that up is because when they That's face – That's Missouri. That's Missouri. That's against Missouri. Yeah, yeah. Is that, right. that a favorite vote? I think so, yeah. I meant Missouri. Uh, with Missouri, the, that was the three guys that were in double digits. They had mm-hmm. a very low field goal percentage. But when they changed and they played Vanderbilt, they shot 62%. 62%. They only turned the ball six, six uh, turned the ball over six times. They had four guys in double digits mm-hmm. that started, and, uh, led by Waters again, this time with 28 points. 28 and, and nine. 28 and nine. One heck of a performance from the Tigers against Vanderbilt, showing tons of improvement over – the game just the one before against Missouri. Yeah. Well, you know, I want to start with the Missouri game because there's one thing I want to point out, and it's just why I love Will Wade so much. Um, and it's because this man, he's a coach. He is a coach. The previous coach was not a coach. You didn't see him do things like Will Wade does, who call timeouts to draw up plays or change your defense like he did in the final minute of the Missouri game. He went to a 1-3-1, which they did not see all game long. They had no idea LSU was going to come out in that. And he did it in the final minute of the game, called timeout, changed it up because they were shooting lights out from the perimeter. He knew he had to stop one some way. That's how he did it. And that's a, I mean, that's a brilliant move. That's why Will Wade can do giant things at LSU. Mm-hmm. He can put the LSU basketball program on the map again like it was under Dale Brown or John Brady, where you're going to Final Fours and you're competing for national titles. John Brady loves Will Wade, first of all. 
I don't know how anybody can't love Will Smith. I know. Listen, I do not disagree with you. I completely agree. Um, the thing is, is that now that this LSU basketball program has had these back-to-back wins, their schedule is favorable for their last three games, and we'll really? get to that in a moment. Um, but right now they stand 10th in the SEC, but not as bad as it may sound because there are we are 7 and 8 in the SEC. There are six teams that are 8 and 7. Yeah, Six teams. So we face Georgia next on the road, and then we face South Carolina on the road. Both of those teams are 15 and 13. We have a better record than both of them in both overall and SEC play. So those are teams that we could beat. That would leave us looking 9 and 8, potentially going to Mississippi State, who is one of those 8 and 7 teams in the SEC. Uh And Will Wade's been asked about it this week, so I'm going to ask you about it, the possibility – of LSU postseason play. Oh, I think they end up in the NIT. I, I, mean, that, I, that still don't, I still don't think they go to the big dance. I mean, I, I would think LSU at a, at best should hope for two and one over the next two games. Um, for them to make the NCAA tournament, I think they would have to win out and probably make it to the finals of the SEC tournament or just win the whole thing, get the automatic bid. But – NIT in the first year for Will Way would be absolutely fantastic. And he said on Monday, you know, he, he said they were asking about goals for the season. He said, you know, to have a winning record was the main oh, wait, goal. Do not forget, this team was 10 and 21 last year. They lost 15 games. 15 straight. They were 10 and 21. And with their win over Vanderbilt, they have secured a winning exactly. season. Exactly. I mean, at he's the done, worst, they're 16 to What he's done is fantastic. And it's been through Tremont Waters. As Trey Waters goes, this LSU basketball team goes. In the last two games, he's had 21-4 and four against Missouri and 28-9 against um, Vanderbilt, and he just hits shots that people shouldn't be able to hit. He is an awesome player, and you got to think that's going to be great next year when he's still on the team and you got – the big guys coming in in your recruiting class that Will Wade has. So. I completely agree. I mean, overall this season, you know, we're third in the league in points per game. Mm-hmm. We're fifth in the league in assists per game. Thanks very heavily to Trey Montgomery. And you can tell just from the four different guys that were in double digits in scoring against Vanderbilt. We know how to get the ball to each other. Trey Waters is a fantastic vision on the court. He can get the ball where it needs to go. And, you know, that – also translates into being second in the league in field goal. And not only that, he does it constantly. He, oh, it's consistent. I agree. But what I mean by that is he is always on the floor. Against Missouri, he played 37 minutes. Yeah. Against Vanderbilt, he played 38. A basketball game is 40 minutes yes. long. He's there the whole time, even in games where he's not scoring well. Right. He is still leading the team in a season. And he doesn't quit. That's the no. thing. He never exactly. takes a playoff. He's He is the kind of player that – to me, he's not going to be a lottery pick. So you're going to have him for a long time. Right. He's the kind of player you can build your program right. around. He's a program guy. Mm-hmm. And you need those kinds of people in college basketball still. Even with the one and done, you still need those program guys to help you. He's going to be a constant for at least three years at LSU, maybe four. And not just and with the guys that Will Wade is going to be able to bring in and recruit, that speaks volumes to the direction of this program is headed in, and it's going nowhere but up. I completely agree. And Will Wade was asked this week if he had mentioned the NCAA tournament at all to his team, and uh, he said that he finally didn't mention it. He said there will be pressure, but do not forget that pressure is a privilege, mm-hmm. which is a privilege that this LSU basketball team has not had for quite some time. Nope. And – you know what? They've responded pretty okay under the pressure. I am, I am very excited to see um, if – because we should win against Georgia and South Carolina. Those, those are games – I say should. I mean we are very capable. They're very – I think, I think every game else has life is just a 50-50 game. It could go either way. I would like to really see them beat Georgia this weekend since Georgia came and the Baton Rouge should beat LSU on the home floor. Go get your revenge. Do that. Kind of like you did with Vanderbilt. Uh, South Carolina – not the same team that went to the Final Four last year. No. So, again, winnable. Mississippi State uh, is just not very good. So, you should – that one, I would give more of a less – I would give LSU the advantage in that one, I think. Uh, well, I say they're not very good. They're 8-7 and seven in the league, 20-8 and eight overall. Yeah, I mean, they could end up sneaking into the tournament as well. They're not bad, but it's at home, and they've been playing really well at home lately. Right. So, we will see. I'm very excited. Uh, definitely – 
I, I have a feeling that Mississippi State, depending on how the next two games go, could sell out the the PMAC. Yeah. Um, and with almost no doubt. But very excited about that. It is now time for our final five. Mm-hmm. And let's stick with LSU just in the beginning of this final five. A um, little football news. You know, this yeah. is kind of the downtime, but there is something very noteworthy that's happened this week. And that's been the move from Coach O to move Manny Netherly, a wide receiver, recruited as a wide receiver, to the cornerback position where we are very thin, if you remember correctly. Yes. Four cornerbacks. Got a whole lot of nothing uh, in the draft class <laughs> this year, in our recruiting class. So what do you think about this move to move well, Netherly? Yeah, you know, if you were going to move anybody around on – to the defensive side of the ball, defensive back, be a wide receiver. One, because I mean, it makes no sense. And two, because you have twelve of them on your roster. Um, How many cornerbacks do you have? Hey, four. You have four cornerbacks and uh, twelve scholarship wide receivers. Anyway, uh, I'm not a giant fan of the move. I don't think it's going to be that great. I mean, maybe it works out. Maybe no. He's got great size, six three, one eighty five. I think so. He's got great size. I mean, that'd be epic if he could turn into a great defensive back. LSU's had guys do it before. Morris Claiborne's one of them. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Who came as a wide receiver. Didn't really play wide receiver very much in camp at all. But, you know, it can be done. Uh, I'm just not, uh, you know, it's tough for me to get excited about it because, you know, you, you had two cornerbacks in, in the grass that you should have just tried to close on better, and it didn't work out for you, and now you're forced to move wide receivers over so to this, the defense. This move ball. does not increase your confidence in Coach O'Connor. That's what you're saying. I, I, you said that. I didn't say that. <laughs> but I, uh, it's just what I'm reading. Well, you. It's not Coach Ogeron. It's the entire state of the football program that I lack confidence in right now. But uh, I don't want to say it, do, it doesn't increase. I don't want to say it increases confidence, but it doesn't diminish it. I mean, it, it's, it could work. It has worked in the past. I, uh, you know, I'm just not, and it, it's hard because a lot of, um, a lot of athletes, they don't, they tend to drift to the offensive side of the ball, less than the defensive right. side of the ball now. So, I mean, you know, yeah, he's an athlete. He's a great athlete. Hopefully he can do it. We have great defensive backs coaches that can hopefully turn him in to it. Until I see it though, it's not something that I'm just over head over heels for, but. We'll see. Understandably so. There's one more thing I want to get to, uh, and that is something that you should have stayed up for last night. If you did not, you 100% missed out. And that is the USA women's hockey team in the Olympics last night. To the day. To the day. To you cannot the write day. This stuff. You cannot write this up. Tell us a story. That's the kind of stuff that's made in movies, right? Well, you know, Canada. Four our, straight gold our, medals. Our neighbors to the north. Yep. They are uh, four straight gold medals in yep. women's hockey. Yeah. In the Winter Olympics, and they beat the United States all four of those years. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've actually been in the final against each other at least for the last six years now. Huh? Uh, last United States win coming in 98 until last night. They win in a shootout, but not just a shootout, extra shots in the shootout. And – Oh, that was just great. I mean, that was fun to see. I'm not, by any means, I'm not a hockey guy. I mean, it's not something I, you know, we're in Louisiana. We don't have hockey. Now, when the Kingfish were here, though, that was hey, stuff. Yeah, but, yeah, Chuck, uh, Chuck a puck. Um, <laughs> but they, that was just great to see. In, in, in an Olympics that the United States has not had a lot of success at. No. Okay, we can actually be pretty honest. They basically kind of stunk. Um, they're losing to the French. Um, unacceptable. It's unacceptable. The French are wimps. Okay. Uh, uh, the but views it was just expressed awesome in this program are not <laughs> are not necessarily the views of the weekly beat. Just it's, one member, perhaps. It was just great to see for them, though, and you could see on their faces how much they meant. And oh, that's a hard way to lose in, in a shootout, but they worked so hard, and to see them reach that pinnacle was fantastic. And to the day. Do you the believe miracle in miracles? I just to the day, and you know how many gold medals the men's Russian team had won in a row? Four, which coincidentally is the same number of scholarship quarterbacks <laughs> on the amazing. LSU it's football the, team. It's, everything connects. It's, it's amazing. It all, yeah, it's it's math. Uh, but that will do it here for the weekly beat this week. Uh, we are very excited about Texas this weekend at the box. 
um, LSU basketball, of course, finishing up the Olympics here pretty soon. But next week, expect a preview and a recap of all things LSU when the beat goes on.